welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we're going to be talking all about English paper piecing. So English paper piecing has quickly become one of my favorite things to do. So sometimes it's called English paper piecing, sometimes you'll hear it referred to as EPP. Either one is basically the same thing. And what this refers to is taking paper templates to make fabric shapes and then sewing those shapes together and creating something amazing like a quilt or a pillow or a wall hanging, anything you want. The reason that you would use the paper templates over just say piecing a quilt or something like that is because you can make really awkward shapes that you wouldn't necessarily really be able to do with a sewing machine without quite a bit of hassle. Now, originally when I heard about EPP, I thought, oh, that looks like way too much work. The quilts are absolutely beautiful and amazing, but I'm just not up for it. But I'm really glad that I decided to give it a try because it's quickly become one of my most favorite things to do. One of my favorite things about it is that it's completely portable. So as whereas if I'm quilting, I need to be in my sewing room with my machine at all times. EPP, I can take anywhere. I bring it in the car with me. I bring it over while we're watching a movie and sit on the couch. I have all my supplies in one handy place and I can just sit there and still be stitching and I like to be doing something when I'm watching movies um, and so that really kind of fills that creative need and it's just so much fun and really when you're taking it small pieces at a time it's not that overwhelming. So I'm going to be doing this series. We're going to do it in three different parts. In part one I'm going to be sharing all my favorite supplies. There's really not a lot you need to get started with this um, so it's really fairly affordable project and number two I'm going to show you how I choose my fabrics, how I cut them out, all of those kinds of things. And then in video three, I'll show you how to actually sew the pieces together and kind of manage a pattern and a quilt. So let's go ahead and get started with all of my favorite supplies. Okay, so here are some of my favorite supplies. Of course, you don't need all these, but I will cover what I use the most and why. So number one, right off the bat, you're gonna need some sort of a paper template. That's what English paper piecing stands for. Most patterns that you purchase will come with the templates, but just read the description. And the paper templates are just these, uh, they're almost like a card stock, so they're a little bit of a thicker paper, but they are just the exact shape that you need. And so these are really handy. So I bought the Tula Nova quilt pattern. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and it came with all of the pieces that I need to make the entire quilt top. Some patterns will come where you have to print them out and cut them yourself. So that's just something you're gonna wanna watch when you're looking at um, purchasing patterns. So the paper templates are definitely something you're gonna kind of need in order to complete a pattern. The second thing you're gonna Want is some kind of a rotary trimmer and this is my favorite one. I use the Ulfa 45 millimeter rotary trimmer. I use this for all of my sewing and quilting projects and it's just my favorite kind to use. Um, the next thing that is handy, and this isn't a have to have, but I definitely recommend and love this. This is the Sue Daily Rotating Cutting Mat. And why this is helpful, and you'll see it more in our cutting video, um, but this actually rotates really nice. And you might even be able to hear those ball bearings in there. It's not one of the kind that is kind of foam sitting on like a shape where the, you kind of have to turn it and it's hard. This thing literally will spin. So it makes it really nice and handy when you're cutting all of your pieces out. So I highly recommend one of those. But again, you don't have to have this. You can totally cut these on any of your self-healing cutting mats that you might already have. The next thing that you're gonna want is some kind of a glue stick. And I am just using these sew line glue sticks. Um, I know Sue Daly makes one as well that I've heard is really good. I have not tried hers yet. Um, but it's basically just a pen and it comes with refills or you can purchase refills. So I purchased this pen initially and I have since bought refill packs. The refills kind of look like this and you actually put this inside the pin and then when you pull it off uh, the glue kind of comes out. So the glue is in this white part so I don't want to take it apart um, but then you can see in here it just goes right down inside your glue pin and then your glue can just roll out like that. And then it'll roll all the way out. You can kind of see that tip right there. So you would just pop in a new one and then roll it down and you've got yourself a handy little glue stick. And this is blue until it dries, so that's kind of helpful, and I'll talk all about how to glue um, your pieces. You can also sew baste your pieces, but I have found that the glue stick is just so much faster, and then plus I don't have to go back through and rip out all of my basting stitches or anything like that. So I'm a huge fan of the glue basting method. The next thing you're gonna want is a nice little sharp pair of scissors. These are my favorite ones. These are OmniGrid four inch scissors. They're super sharp. Um, they even come with this little end on them here, uh, but they're 
really, really nice and sharp and small, and they're perfect to put in your bag, but you will just need some kind of a little pair of scissors. Um, the next thing you're gonna need, and this is a for sure need, is some kind of needle to sew with, and I like these tulip needles. These are size number 10 applique needles and um, they're just a really good size Tula Pink recommended these in her video and so I've just started with those and so I really love them so I've just kind of kept up with them they're really nice and strong so I don't find that I bend them a whole lot or anything like that one needle lasts me for quite a long time the next thing you're going to need is some fun thread this is probably my favorite part right here and it gives me an excuse to use all of my beautiful spools of thread that I have hanging on my wall over there I just used to use them for binding my quilts but now I can use them for all my English paper piecing pieces and how I choose my thread and I'll talk a little bit more about this when we do our fabric um, but how I choose my thread is I just pick the thread that matches my fabric the best I have a couple pieces of fabric right here and so for example for this piece you've got some aqua color and you've also got some darker blue in there I would probably go with the lighter of the two colors so I would choose this kind of aqua color and my rule of thumb is the lighter the thread the harder it is to see on the pieces now that's of course if you have something that's kind of in between like this if you have something like this where you've got the darker blue but it has a white background I would still go with the white thread. Um, if you have something that's really, really dark blue or a solid, then I would try and match that as best as I can with my thread. That's gonna hide any thread that you might have um, peeking out in your stitches, and it just makes it a lot less noticeable if your uh, thread is matching your fabric. So go ahead and have a good excuse to go buy yourself some fun thread. Now, as far as thread goes, um, I have tried a couple different kinds. Orifil 50 weight is my favorite. I know some people recommend Orifil 80 weight because it's a thinner thread. I found that I had a lot more tangling with that thread and I also broke my thread quite a bit more and it was really frustrating for me. So I have since stuck with the 50 weight thread and how you can tell is the 50 weight has these orange spools the um, 80 weight has these green spools and it's just a thinner thread and it's totally fine. I know people who love this and maybe they're just more experienced with EPP um, than I am, but I really had a hard time struggling with this 80 weight thread. So definitely use whatever works best for you. The next thing that I'd like to kind of point out, and this is just sort of a nice to have, you don't have to, but I love these little sew, sew tights sticklers. So these are just little sticky thimble pads that can go on your finger. And I just put it right here on the tip of this finger because this is the one that I use to kind of push my needle through my thread. And then on this side, they're kind of tacky. They also have some that are sort of more of a leather feel. Um, they're like faux leather. I actually really love those as well. And they're just um, like these kind of leathery looking ones. And I'll try and link both below. But I do like both of these quite a bit. They're um, just really comfortable to wear and I like that they're reusable. So as soon as I'm done, I'll just take it off and I'll usually just put it on the outside of my needle case or in my travel to go case, I have a little piece of um, vinyl on there and I can just stick these on the front and then they just stay in there and then I can put them back on. So I like that they're reusable. They're nice and handy to have and they definitely kind of save your fingers. So let's talk about these templates really quick. So these are Tula Pink templates that I got from the quilt pattern that I was going to originally do. And so they're just these acrylic pieces. They're the exact size that you need to cut your fabric to. And then you can see they match each one of them matches one of my template pieces perfectly. Now she has a little bit larger of a seam around. I know some EPP people I uh, like to do a quarter of an inch seam around theirs. I find that I kind of struggle a little bit with that because it's just not enough fabric for me. So I actually really prefer having a three eighths of an inch seam around the outs or fabric around the outside of my template. So you can do whatever works for you. These templates are completely optional, but they are so handy when you're cutting your fabric. And so not all EPP patterns will come with templates like this. Some do, some don't, but especially awkward shapes um, like these kites are really so much easier easier when you ah when you have a template to follow. And so I went ahead and invested in these. Of course, they up your, your price for this uh, project a little bit more. I don't regret getting these at all. I use them quite a bit and they've just made my cutting a lot easier. So again, that's another optional. And then last but not least, I wanted to share my, like this is a mandatory for me, but I did have to get some reading glasses. These ones are just, I think my mom got them for me from Hobby Lobby or Walmart or somewhere, I don't know. Uh, but they're just super cute and I really can't stitch 
without them, I really need to be able to see what I'm doing. And at this point, um, I definitely need a little bit of help seeing those tiny stitches. So the next thing I wanna share with you is this Stella Go Light. This is one of my new favorite acquisitions. And this light is so great because I do a lot of my English paper piecing in the evenings. Um, and so I just need adequate lighting. And especially if we're watching a movie, I can just put this right on my chair and it can go over my lap. It's not bothering everybody else, but it gives me really good light. So I'll go ahead and turn it on so you can kind of see it. Um, it has different modes, so three different modes. Um, and then of course you can turn it down. Hopefully you can tell in the video it's going down or you can turn it up. And then this does come with a chargeable base. And so you just set it on the base. These little arrows indicate the charge that it's charging. Um, that the base can also charge your phone. Um, and so it's just kind of nice and handy. And so I really haven't been stitching without this, uh, just cause like I said, I like to do it in the evening and the having adequate lighting is kind of a must for me. So this is definitely one of my top picks for English paper piecing. I also use it for cross stitching and knitting in the evenings. And then lastly, I wanted to share with you my little craft to go case. This is a free tutorial on my channel and I made this specifically for my English paper piecing. I love it so much. It has a cute little zipper pouch in the front and that's where I keep my pattern. And then if you open it up inside, it's got spaces for all of your EPP stuff. And let's do it down here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, but when you open it up inside, it's got places for all of your threads. So the rest of my thread is on my table here, but it all fits right in here perfectly. It's got a little pouch for the needles. And then this little vinyl pouch is where I put my little thimble. I'm just on the front because it just stays on there, but it doesn't, you know, get rid of the tack. I've got a little place for some fun scissors. This side has a nice big pocket for all of the pieces that I am currently working on. So I store anything that I've prepared in here or anything that I've sewn um, until I get it added to my bigger piece. And then it also has this little magnetic flip on the side and I store my little sew tights right there. So this is super handy. I put everything I need in this. It just folds up, zips up, and then I can just take it with me um, when I'm traveling. So that's definitely a must in my opinion. I love having that little tote. I can just bring it everywhere. You can make more than one. So you have one for each of your projects and it just keeps everything nice and organized. Or you can kind of just keep all your stuff in one and then you can work on anything while you're on the go. Now let's just talk about how I kind of got started doing this because like I said at the beginning, it can be really kind of intimidating looking at all those English paper piecing um, quilts and projects because they're, they look like there's just so much sewing. But something I discovered right off the bat is that you actually don't do all that sewing at once. You do it in small little pieces. And so you don't, it's like attainable. So for example, I'm working on the Tula Nova quilt. This is the one that I am currently working on and I'm sure you've seen it in my podcast. I'll uh, insert a little bit of footage of it right here for you so you can kind of see what it looks like thus far. I'm right here on this center bit right here so I still have some more to go. So I'm right there. I can choose to stop or keep going if I want so that's one of the things that I do love about EPP. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that I didn't make this whole thing all at once. You actually sew it in small sections. So here's a little example for you. Um, when you first start out you're actually sewing these two together and you make like say 10 of them and then you add the this to them and so really you're only sewing these three little seams right here and it makes everything a lot more attainable you're like oh I can do that and you can make like say two or three while you're watching TV and then you can put it away and come back the next night and make a handful more I'll go ahead and show you the back of it really quick here this is kind of what it looks like as you can see it's really nice and neat on the back you can see my fabric is glued down to the paper pieces the paper is still inside there and you do want to keep that paper in there until you sew this piece to something else. The rule of thumb with English paper piecing is once all of your sides are sewn into another piece, then you can remove the paper. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the sewing portion um, of the videos. But I just wanted to kind of encourage you that you can do these in little small sections and then they're not quite so overwhelming. Now, when I first started, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. I think I already mentioned that. And so what I decided to do was get started with a tiny little project. And so I had these little hexagon papers in my stash and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give this a try and see if I even like it before I purchase anything made. Major. And so I got out my little hexes and I cut my fabric, just kind of rough cut around the outside. They weren't perfect at all. And then I went ahead and just sewed them together piece by piece. And I probably started with like these two and then I added maybe this center one and then I added this one and you just kind of add them one at a time as you go around. And so I made this cute little hexagon. I don't know, I could use this as a mug rug or I can applique it onto a larger piece. Or if I wanted, I could continue adding more little hexagons around the outside of it. There are a lot of possibilities when you're doing EP 
EPP, and you can kind of be the boss of your own EPP. You can make them bigger, smaller. Um, you know, you kind of do whatever you want, really. So if you're not sure, I highly recommend just doing something really small like this. Go online, get a hexagon design, print it out. This one used seven little hexagons. Just print it on some cardstock, cut it out yourself, and then just give it a go and see if you even like it. If you do, which I think you might, then you can kind of dive into some of these other supplies. Um, but I did just start this cute little project just to see if I liked it. And now I have this little thing. I'm going to kind of hang on to it because it was my first one. It's not perfect by any means, but I could definitely applique it onto some fabric and make a little mug rug. Or if I wanted, I could just add some more little hexagons around the outside and just keep on going. So starting off with a fun little project like this is a great way to just kind of get your feet wet and see if you like it. And then lastly, you're just going to need some fun fabric. So I've got this stash. This is my um, Pam Kitty morning stash. This is such a fun fabric line. It's got all kinds of fun, bright colors in it. And I had a lot of scraps of these. And so this is actually kind of perfect. I've just got these random fabric bits in here and they're perfect for these English paper piecing pieces because you don't need a whole lot and they can be like weird shapes. I highly recommend digging into your stash bin for this. Uh, just pull out some fabrics that you like, um, you know, that kind of coordinate and complement each other and then you're pretty much ready to get started. So I think that's it for all of my favorite English paper piecing products. As you see, you really don't need a whole lot to get started. At the very bare minimum, you need your paper templates, you need some fun fabric, you need a way to cut that fabric, so scissors or rotary trimmer, you need a needle and thread, and then you need some glue basting if you're going to glue baste. If not, you don't even need that and you're good to go. So those are all my favorite products. If you have something that you absolutely love and you've done English paper piecing before, please make sure to leave it in the comments below this video so everyone can share their ideas. Ideas. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and then stick around because part two will be coming next and we'll be talking about our fabric placement, how I choose my fabric and how to cut out our pieces. So thank you for joining me for today. As always, if you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of my upcoming fun videos. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.